Well, good. Speak away. Hi, folks. Uh, I'm Bob Strat, and uh, I want to talk to you about two things. Uh, one is what we can learn from other disciplines, and the other is something that really surprised me, which is they're almost in the real world from the government is something that looks like a get out of jail free card. It turns out it's for a good reason, but that one was kind of shocking to me. So do we have any pilots in the room? Actual flight almost? Yeah, like, like, you know, the kind you can sit in. Um, you, you don't have to ask that. If there are pilots around, yeah, they'll tell you. <laughs> Existence proof, right? So uh, I put the funny letters after my name because I find it amusing. According to the FAA, I'm a certificated private pilot. I don't think that's a word either. But that's the one they always use. So, uh, by way of background, I've done a bunch of uh, security startups, ran security and ISP. But the thing that kind of drove me to this talk is that I come from a family that has a computing background and an aviation background. Uh, my dad was this, in the second customer engineering class back when computer companies had cool names at Spirit Unit back. And my great grandfather is a member of a small group of folks who flew before World War I. Uh, so there's a group called the Early Birds of Aviation. And if you go up the street to Independence Avenue to the Air and Space Museum, in the early flight gallery, there's a plaque. There are a bunch of names on the plaque. Uh, the, the two smallest at the top are Wright, Comic Wolver, and Wright, Comic Wolver. But if you look through there, you'll see a bunch of names that you may still see today uh, Cessna. Curtis and a bunch of others, and way over there on the right is my great granddad. So somebody in every generation since him in my family has been a pilot. So I was thinking about this, and I realized that these are two industries where, in both cases, bad things happen. You want to try to stop bad things from happening, and you like to try to figure out what you can learn to maybe not do the same dumb thing again. And I think it's also interesting, you know, both sectors, depending on who you talk to. Uh, acknowledge that you can't fully eliminate risk. So you have to get good at learning lessons from things. But there is one difference that I've observed, and folks may disagree with me, but uh, I think the information security community is really good at tracking bugs in things and in software. But we are not particularly optimized for tracking and recording and learning from operational workflow process screw-ups, mistakes, fumbles, you know, mistyping. The, the, the one that comes to mind is like when Pakistan was trying to block YouTube internally, they announced a route that black holed it for the whole planet, you know, stuff like that. Um, but aviation is actually really pretty good at that. And, you know, there are a couple of reasons for this, right? Nobody wants to admit that they screwed up because you might incur liability, you might give your customers an edge, but really it's mainly because you don't want to dumb. Um, but there are some reasons that it's worth it. It's worth doing. You know, but it, certainly if you're a gay issue I don't want people to hit me uh, when I'm on airplane. Um, in any discipline, I don't care what it is, you become more effective as you learn lessons. And frankly, and I say this based on my old incident response. Uh, history, I'd much rather be playing video games than getting phone calls before I'm learning. So I'd like to learn from what I can. So if you look at how aviation does it, the first really important thing to note is that in the definitions and the legal history of things, the primary mission of the Federal Aviation Administration is to promote aviation safety. And to, to their credit, they instituted a voluntary reporting system in 1975 and it took them a grand total of about three months to figure out that because they were also the enforcement mechanism and that they might have a legal obligation to act on anything that anyone told them, that that might not work out right. But, uh, so they actually uh, took uh, this option and NASA and the inside San Francisco are definitely very too much options. What do you have to do? This is right to serve. Are right. you? Everyone so, so, uh, I don't know what happens. So they created a system called the 
aviation safety reporting system. And they use NASA, who are subject matter experts in things that fly, but are not enforcement authorities. And they collect reports. They uh, it's a charter of how the mission Yeah, stay, stay right now. Right now. So, for example, out of this data they collect, they publish a monthly report, and if you think about it sort of like the mishap flavor of one, you know, it's everything from equipment problems to uh, user interface issues in controls and uh, consoles and air traffic control to just workflow things like I was distracted when I was trying to land and things didn't go quite right and I deviated on my altitude, which by the way, in trouble. Uh, but any kind of mistake or mishap or screw up, they capture in the system and they do amazing analysis. It's all up there on the web. I have the URL at the end. Uh, you can read them yourself. And they'll do flavor of the month. You know, runway incursions is this month. And you'll hear all these, you'll read all these uh, anonymized reports like I was doing this and I got this. I looked down at my iPad and crossed a runway boundary and oops, that was bad. Uh, but one interesting thing, we have a good since 1975, they've got more than one million reports submitted, and NASA has never had a breach of user anonymity in this process. What? Yeah. Why? I, I, I was kind of shocked. Um, so, what is it? How does it really work? Well, there's a form. The top part of the form, you actually have your identifying information that you're, you know, who you are. When you submit it, NASA timestamps it, cuts it off, and mails it back to you. If things go wrong, you pull that out. The rules are designed so that in FAA policy, they say we will view that as evidence of a constructive attitude, which means they'll give you a little bit of benefit of the doubt. But in the law, it says they will not use something from this report to go after you for enforcement. And there are a few criminal exceptions, but it's actually an amazingly broad immunity. Uh, and so I, I view it as one of the very few amazingly enlightened government programs that actually seems to accomplish what it was uh, set out to, to do. So how does this apply to information security? We're really good at reporting product stuff and code stuff, but we really don't have broadly deployed systems for workflow reporting issues. I don't know, I mean, I've worked at ISPs and I have a lot of friends in the, in the network providers, but other than like the nano mailing list, I'm not sure if we have a way to actually capture data on how people screw up and how to avoid doing it again. And in the security space, uh, there are islands of this, but I think it's an interesting thing to think about to figure out how we might be able to more uh, pervasively deploy things that aren't just looking at code, but are actually looking at how we work. You know, we complain about the users all the time. It's not just the users, it's the users and the admins. I'd be happy if we just capture data about how the admins do what they do and what works and what doesn't work. So, like I said, it's not about bugs and stuff necessarily. It's about what happened during your day. And for me, the, the second order value proposition is I'd much rather have the reporting and analysis of this kind of information be coming from people who actually understand the space than Joe Random, the uh, reporter, and apologies to impress you at the end of the So, who could do it? Well, you can try and do it within your organization, but it's going to require a will. It's going to probably require the CEO's buy in to say, I'm not going to go after people who made a mistake and disclose it voluntarily. Um, there are cases they, uh, that are analogous to this. You know, certainly there are ethics hotlines and things like that that are roughly analogous to this. I'm not going to say it's always going to be easy in every company. You know, some people like to take the easy route of assigning blame, but I will argue that if that's the tack you take, you are actively uh, antithetical to improving the security of your enterprise. Uh, if you're in a sector that has a government regulator, I actually think this might be a place to come with this, right? They have some subject matter expertise, uh, and they're not regulators other than for what time it is. Um, 
<laughs> and they're pretty good at that. Uh, but you know, it's I, I really try to foster discussion and, and, and contemplation and some collaboration about how we might get better at this. Uh, there is potentially an angle to start a, a nonprofit for this. Uh, you know, the ISACs, uh, the Information Sharing Analysis Centers, sort of do this. Uh, but it's mostly around hits and data and things that machines do. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that the federally funded R&D centers would love to uh, get money to, to do something like this. I'm not sure that they're necessarily plugged into sort of the real world commercial workflow necessarily uh, as much as people actually in those enterprises. So, you know, I would love to hear from anybody in the course of uh, thinking about this, who knows about other things that are out there that are analogous, that are oriented towards people and what people do and what goes wrong, uh, what works, what's there, I may not know about. Uh, if there are things that you feel are kind of there but not giving you what you need, I'd love to understand what they don't do that, that you think might help. And uh, if you're interested in learning about the aviation safety reporting system, it's run out of NASA Ames, um, the URLs up there. And uh, it is, even if you're not piloting, you don't know anything about aviation, there's actually some, some pretty compelling reading in, in some of it. Uh, and it's not all bad news. So uh, with that, that's it for me.